welcome to another tarot reading. Happy Saturday. Happy Halloween. There is so much to celebrate and it's also a full moon tonight. So I wanted to celebrate by expanding this tarot reading and actually doing a pick a card tarot reading. So um, as you can see behind every single one of these candles, I have a card. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and drawn for the collective. I've drawn four cards for the collective and each one is a different group. So um, I have them symbolized by these candles. This is of course a red candle, an orange candle, this is a gold candle, and right here at the end is kind of a caramel or brown candle. And so this is kind of the way that I want you to intuitively draw yourself either to a certain color, to a size of a candle, um, or to the number one through four. So we have group one, group two, group, group three, and group four. And just go ahead and take a minute. You can pause the screen here take three deep breaths and figure out which candle, which color, which number group you are intuitively drawn towards. And I actually haven't looked at any of the cards that I've pulled yet. And we're going to go ahead and shuffle the deck and pull some additional cards for each group in the moment. So um, we're going to go ahead and start with group number one. And I will leave all of the timestamps for each group below so that you can go ahead and fast forward to whichever group that you chose. So group number one. So group number one, your first card is the Nine of Cups. This is speaking a little bit to ego playing a role in things, to maybe expectations or how you are seen. So um, let's see what other information and what other clarifying cards we have for you, group number one. So we also have the Devil card coming up. We have the Seven of Wands, and our governing energy here is the Reverse Three of Wands. So again, with the Nine of Cups, we are talking about this energy of the ego, this energy of selfishness, or of kind of coming to what you have to do from a place of resentment or from a place of bitterness, and just from a place of not really feeling fulfilled, right? Your cup isn't full, so you're not able to give anyone else any of that overflow, right? You're not filled up. So instead you're feeling resentful, you're feeling burnt out, you're feeling exhausted, and you're feeling like whatever work you're doing, you're not putting your best foot forward. And we also have the devil card come up. So of course, this is a major arcana card, the only one in this reading. And this is really drawing you to think about all the chains that are holding you back, all of the things that have been forcing you to self-sabotage or forcing you to just be overly hard on yourself, forcing yourself to ignore what your higher self wants and what your intuition is telling you. And instead, you know, letting yourself kind of get sucked into what's going on around you and to these other energies, right? So we want to break free of those situations. We want to break free of our limiting beliefs. We want to let go of these chains so that we can actually live the life that we are meant to live and meant to pursue. And with the seven of wands, again, this beaver dam card, it really talks about standing your ground and deciding what boundaries you want to have and uphold and what you want to let go of and what you want to be firm about in maintaining in this next phase of your life, right? So in this moment and in during this process of letting go of shedding things that don't hold you back, there's also this energy of claiming what you do want and being firm in that and knowing that even if what you want or what you see for yourself isn't right in front of you, how can you take this time to draw yourself closer to that? How can you act in accordance to that person? So for example, if you want to be, you know, a professional musician in all those situations where you're feeling tired or unmotivated or bored or just uninspired, what, can, what, think about what would a professional musician do, right? How can you put yourself in those situations to act in accordance to where you want to see yourself be? And we also have this card of the reverse three of wands. So a lot of this generally speaks to professional success. It speaks to building a foundation, but seeing it in reverse, it's kind of this energy of a lot in your foundation is going to be uplifted. It's going to be uprooted. A lot is going to change. You're going to need new tools. You're going to be able, you're going to need to pick up and put down different resources and go kind of back and forth with 
all of the resources in your toolbox and a lot of them you're going to see that you don't have the tools that you need and that's going to cause this pursuit and this drive to make sure that you add those because you re realize now finally that you need them and you realize that through this process of uprooting and changing that all that change points out to you exactly what you want to stay still exactly what you want to keep and that gives you the conviction and the power to chase after those things more fully and by knowing that by knowing what you need to move forward what you need to keep what you want to bring into this new energy of who you want to be a lot of that comes with filling up your cup right not getting sucked into the ego not getting sucked into what other people want for you um, but instead standing your ground and by doing that you're going to be able to fill your cup because you're walking in alignment you're doing things that you want to do so even when you're tired you feel like at least this is giving back to me i can take a rest but this energy that i'm getting back from doing what i love from coming to it from a place of love is giving me the sustenance and the impact and energy that i need to you know to to keep going to move forward so um, I hope that that resonated with you, group number one. If it did, then leave me your favorite red emoji in the comments below or let me know what you thought of the reading and if it helped you. And um, yeah, we're going to leave it at that for you, group number one. It's really just about putting your ego aside and figuring out what you want and through the process of everything else changing or going through some external changes or not seeing what could be different, how can you maintain this energy of letting go and reclaiming? That's what this new season is really about for you. And of course, we're in Scorpio season and so much of that is gonna support you in letting go and in reclaiming. So that's your work group number one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful weekend and I will catch you next time. Group number two, it is time for you. So anyone in the orange group, hello. I'm glad to see you here. Um, let's go ahead and see what the cards have in store for you. So our very first card, we have the three of pentacles, this card coming up of craft, of collaborations, of admiration from your community. And we also see the nine of swords coming up, the lover's card and our governing energy is the queen of wands. So this is a beautiful reading. What we're seeing is that, you know, you have so much support around you. You have so much comfort, not necessarily comfort, but a community around you. And you maybe didn't always have that before. And it's easy to overlook that because while in some ways this is something that you've wanted for so long, you've also kind of put this community or put this group of people on a pedestal and in doing that you've kind of separated yourself from them and you felt maybe a little bit overwhelmed and hard and you're finding it kind of hard to step into that role as a leader right because you've put it on such a pedestal because you've separated yourself from being this person who has a community, now that you're there, it's hard for you to recognize it all the time and it's hard for you to step into that role of a leader, but this is really a sign to say, recognize that you have that beautiful community, that support system, recognize that people admire you and feel comfortable in receiving that admiration and in receiving that love from the people around you. But again, all of these kind of moments of questioning all these ideas of not being unsure come up with this nine of swords card and seeing kind of these negative thoughts keeping you up at night right things feeling like they're gonna go away not feeling like you want to give in to how good things are right now because you're so worried about what could happen if it goes wrong and again we do see that waxing moon i'm sorry that waning moon in the card so i love that there's a moon in this card because it really talks about that period of letting things go of shedding those limiting beliefs of realizing that your fears are tied to the past but you don't have to project those fears into the future and that's a huge one and finally with this lover's card this again is the only major arcana card so this is really talking about sending love to that shadow side of you sending love to both sides of who you are and sending love to that part of yourself that you may see as weaker or that you may kind of judge or cringe at or that you want to separate yourself from again realize that that is part of you and that anything that you truly want to let go of anything that you think is an ugly or a toxic habit you have the ability to do that but you're not going to be able to fully let go until you've accepted and until you've forgiven and so much of that needs to go towards our past selves because there's so many of memories or things that we have that might keep coming up for us that just 
we just continue to judge ourselves for. And the more that we are different from that, the more that we want to judge those things. But it's saying, no, show that love and show your present shadow self love as well. Anything, even that tendency to want to judge yourself is a part of your shadow work that you're doing, but you need to forgive yourself for that. You need to accept that. And that's always the first step in healing anything. And then we also have this queen of pentacles, right? So this is talking a lot about mastery, not control of nature, being at one with what's going on around you, feeling connected to your intuition, and also recognizing the signs of how things are speaking to you from the external world as well and being really present so that you can stay focused in walking with alignment while also again paying attention to what's happening and your role in all of that so by that again this really is speaking to that leadership quality as well that we see with the three of pentacles the queen of pentacles is further down that journey and has that kind of mature energy about being this leader stepping into this role realizing that you are learning from your community just as much as they're learning from you you are giving to them just as much as they're giving to you and how can you be a master of both giving and receiving to close that cycle so that you stop feeling disconnected so that you stop feeling like the past is coming back to get you so that you stop reliving these old patterns and actually allow yourself to show yourself love show yourself acceptance and forgiveness and move on and embrace this energy of who you could be because you're not getting so caught up in this minutia of things weren't always this way how can they be better how can i make sure i don't repeat these mistakes instead focus on what you want to cultivate more of and put your energy there so that is your work your assignment group number two and if you resonated with this message let me know down below or just leave your favorite orange emoji so that I can know that this reading hit home for you. So thank you so much, group number two. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I will catch you guys next week. Happy healing. Okay, group number three. Let's see what we have for you. So our first card is the strength card and look at that. We get the golds and the oranges and the yellows that just match your candle so this truly was meant to be actually it's ironic because i started out with a white candle i think it's up there but it uh one of two of the three wicks weren't working so i decided not to use it and now we get this color match which is so interesting so we have the strength card we also have the magician card we have the hierophant and our final card is the world i have never had a reading of all major arcana cards so this is a very very powerful time for you a very powerful time of transition for you and what's so crazy is we're also seeing this color of orange come up in every single one of these cards there's some form of orange so that's really beautiful um so what we're seeing so far is with the strength card we're seeing you know First of all, this is a major time of transition, but again, with the strength card, we're seeing, you know, finding strength, finding power, finding confidence, finding your belief in yourself, um, connecting with all those aspects of your personality, even things like anger or even things like um, frustration or other people doubting in you, this is gonna be a time in your life that that just makes you stronger. The negative makes you stronger, the positive makes you stronger, and you are at a place in your life that you've been able to cultivate so many lessons from so many different places, so many signs from the outer universe. All of these things have been, you've been working towards this and working on yourself and putting in so much hard work that now you're at this place where it doesn't matter if things don't go your way you are still taking strength you are still growing you are still learning and you are going to put all of that information to good use and again we also see the magician so she has that beautiful orange hair and she has all these tools in front of her right so she's able to understand the magic of the world your spirituality is opening up you feel very connected and especially in this time of year with this full moon with the semon holiday i think i said that right i don't know but if i didn't really the point is the veil is thinnest right now in this week on this very day you are able to see through that you're able to kind of see through the illusion and connect to what's real and you're very founded in this aspect of truth and what rings true to you and you have all of these different tools these different spiritual things that you're learning a little bit about this you're learning a little bit about this and all of that is being put to such good use because you're able to use them for the benefit of not only yourself but of others and you're able to step into this role as a leader and then 
We also have this card of the Hierophant. So this is speaking to um, just spirituality, spiritual tradition, speaking to knowledge and cultivating and understanding so much of how things used to be, the history of different aspects of spirituality that you've been interesting, interested in, all these tools that you've picked up and have been learning about over time. How can you really use that to to develop authority and to develop understanding of tradition to understand again how these things came to be and all of that understanding and knowing and going back to the basics and the foundations of everything is again going to help you as this magician to use your tools for the best possible reason to connect with certain tools especially if you're a healer to connect those tools to other people's higher selves your clients higher selves you're going to be able to have this power that lets you decipher what to use for who and when because you are getting back to the foundations and also being present and listening along the way even to those negative things or those clients that are upset with you or whatever it may be you've taken the time to listen to that and gain feedback and all that's doing is just making you stronger in every way possible and at the top we have this card of the world right so we do see it in reverse and with the world we're speaking about unity about peace about travel about you know just understanding this globalized world understanding this oneness that we all see and kind of coming to this beautiful culmination this almost like the end of a journey and the start of even a new one that's just filled with beauty but seeing it in reverse we also want to make sure that we are connected to the collective consciousness that we aren't getting sucked into our ego or getting kind of caught up on these little tiny things because again with all these major arcana cards we're seeing such a major shift such a major phase in your life of change of growth of fundamental power that you can use for positive so make sure you are taking in the benefit of everyone else don't get su so sucked into what you can learn just to better your brand or what tools you can learn just to you know make more money or make have more packages or have more offerings but instead what can you really do to make sure that you are listening to the collective listening to what they need showing up in a way that can benefit other people and also showing up in a way that is equitable in a way that is beneficial for more than just yourself so this is really a key to zoom out because you've cultivated so much and this is not the time to get lost in your power this is not the time to you know feel like you don't know what you're doing or feel like you know this is just about making money because it's not there's so much more here and you found this intuitive spiritual beautiful path over so much time so many decisions so many steps of faith that to now stop taking those steps of faith, to now only focus on what's directly in front of you and that first next step, and to now go back into that cocoon of fear, like this is not the time. We need to crack that shell wide open and show your strength, show your different tools, show your authority, but do it from a place of connecting of connectiveness, connectedness. <laughs> do it from a place of just being at one knowing that at the end of the day all of this material stuff is going to go away all of your accolades are going to go away one day so what have you really left what truly is your legacy how can you move the collective forward and that's in what you should that's what you should really be focused in so that was a very powerful reading group number three wow um so let me know if you resonated below let me know how you felt about this you can also just drop me your favorite gold emoji if you resonated with this reading in the comments but thank you so much for watching i hope that you have a beautiful beautiful full moon a beautiful halloween and a gorgeous week ahead happy healing and finally, we have group number four. So if you resonated with the final group, let's see what we have in store for you. So our first card is the chariot card. We have one major arcana card. Let's see what else we have to say. All right, so we also have the Jack slash Knight of Pentacles. We have the Three of Cups and our governing energy is the Queen of Wands. So what we're seeing here is how can you really take control of the chaos around you, right? So with the Chariot card, again, this is the only major arcana card that we see. So a big phase of your next kind of part of life is you have a lot of projects you have a lot of things going on whether it's balancing your family and work whether it's dealing with you know your kids online schooling whether it's 
you know, dealing with your online schooling and university. There's so many different things that you are struggling to balance, especially with the holidays coming up and family obligations. And it's just a lot. There's a lot on your plate and the cards are acknowledging that, but they also want you to know how can you reconnect with that fascination and how can you slow down? So with this pentacles card, how can you slow down? How can you get present? But then again, with this Jack right here, my deck kind of combines the knight and the page. So I just like to call it the Jack because it feels like its own thing a little bit, but he really is fascinated by something. He's preoccupied with it and he's drawing it. And so he's studying it. He's observing it. He's seeing what it can be and he's doing his best to take notes, to understand, but he's also fully present in the moment doing those things. So how can you really root down and slow down and be connected with what's going on around you? So if you are in school or if you are at work or if you're pursuing some sort of new project, how can you get back to the fundamental basics of your passion and how can you study kind of maybe what everyone else in the industry has done or maybe study a certain thought leader that you really respect maybe you want to um just learn more about how you can better organize your day or your time maybe things like time management but there's going to be little resources or little key phrases that are going to stick out to you and you should pursue the interest of those things because it's all about mastering kind of what you have going on, reigning in the controls of your kind of crazy life, but making the most of it because you wanted to be here. You wanted your life to have all these different wonderful points of passion, all these different people in it. You wanted a full life, right? And you have it. It's right here. So don't get overwhelmed by it. But how can you be present and stay rooted and actually make the most of it by studying the things that you need to study maybe getting some basics down of time management for example like i said because those organizational practices those ways of managing your schedule or your planner are what's going to allow allow you to be present with your family or to make the most of your time that you have to study etc and then with the final card, we also see the Three of Cups, right? So this is about collaboration. This is about connecting with those around you. This is about just finding a way to see the skills that other people have around you. And, you know, can you delegate? Is there anything that you can take off your plate? Is there a way that you can celebrate the strengths of the people around you or of your community? Is there something that you can that you have, do you have similar goals maybe to those around you? And is there a way that you can implement that and work towards that goal as a group instead of feeling so isolated and doing it all on your own? And that might be your answer to reining it all in and having more control is either delegation or just bringing other partners on this ride with you and kind of seeing what can you do together as a cohesive structure to work towards this and achieve this faster. And we also have this Queen of Wands energy. So this Queen of Wands is really about, you know, being confident, being strong, being embodied, being unapologetic, but also watching out that you're not just cutting everyone out, watching out that you're not being overly stubborn and sticking to your guns and not delegating and not asking for help. Those are a lot of the things that it's warning you against and saying, don't do that. And that might be what's normal for you, what's usual for you. And that's why you usually end up feeling like you are in this chaotic space, but you like again, your life, you like the people in your life, you like a lot of the things and the few things that you don't like or that are frustrating you, you can find better ways to manage them. You can either ask someone to help you or you can find a better way to, to just learn about it and execute it in a more understanding, in a more professional, in a more organized way so that you can lean back again and be present in the chaos because that's the kind of person that you are and again lean back into that energy of being unapologetic but also understanding instead of leaning into that space of feeding feeding into scarcity and feeding into this like i have to do it all and no one else is going to do it right and no one else is going to help me well you know why would you make space for all these people in your life you made space because you love them because you want them there so allow them to enter this new sphere of your life and just be okay with asking for help. It's only going to get you further. It's only gonna get you there faster. And that's just the main lesson that you need to hear right now is it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to 
want things to be in control and you have the power to do that. It's just about making that choice and deciding what you want to be stubborn about and what you're willing to let go because you know in your heart of hearts that it's better for everyone if you just let go and ask for help. So that is your reading group number four. Let me know if you resonated and if you did, leave me your favorite brown emoji down in the comments below. Thank you so, so much for watching and I hope that you have a beautiful week ahead, a beautiful Halloween. Thank you so much, group number four. Don't forget to vote all of you. Make sure that you hit the polls or send in your ballot or drop it off wherever you need to and then stay safe and have a beautiful, happy Halloween. I love you all very much. And also if you enjoyed this pick a card format, let me know in the comments below because I can definitely recreate this once a month or maybe even start doing it once a week, we'll see. But um, thank you, I love you, happy healing.